Welcome to Learners Planet students. Students, in today's session we are going to study about fiber to fabric. So students, before getting familiar with these terms, let us first discuss about the importance of clothes. Yes, why are important, why are clothes important for us? Let us discuss about it. As you know students, that appearance is the most important factor in our daily lifestyle. In current society, a person's appearance, dressing and clothing does matter a lot. Dressing sense is said to be the reflection of a person's personality and it also reflects the occasion for which the individual person attends. Right? Like during marriage, a groom will look different, a bride will look different amongst the people. Right? So there will be difference and all that difference can be reflected when the dressing of those people are different. Right? So depending upon this, people of different tastes, cultures and behavioral of works are different. Dresses or clothes are divided into casual wear, formal wear, comfort wear and traditional wear. So you must remember this that, that dressing sense can vary from gender to gender. That means females and males have different choice and they are impressed of dresses and then coming to kids, they also have dresses with respect to their age groups. So we can say that fashions play plays a main role in our clothing and dressing. Clothes are one of our basic necessities. But why are they so important? Yes, clothes are important in our life because they guard our body from weather conditions such as heat, cold and rain. They also protect us from insect bites. And in addition to that, they make us look good. So people wear different kinds of clothes. The type of clothes they wear mainly depends upon the climate of the place, right? So it's not all about fashion. Not every time it's all about fashion. If you are in such a place where there is heavy snowfall, at that time you say that I want to wear cotton clothes. No, that would not be good for you. So, the type of clothes are also playing a very important role that where to wear and in which climate, what we should wear or what to not. So basically, we can say that the human race universally wears articles of clothing known as dress, garments or attire on the body in order to protect it against the adverse climatic conditions. In its broadest sense, clothing is defined as the coverings of our hands, limbs as well as the coverings of our feet and head. Even articles carried rather than one such as purses, wallets are usually counted as accessories like glasses or jewelry although one also fit this category. So children, in most cultures clothing was introduced as a method of protecting our body. But protecting our body against what? Yes, protecting against extreme further, sorry, weather conditions. Right? So basically we wear different types of clothes like leather jacket, jute hat, silk sari, cotton dress, etc. Depending upon the climate. 
So the materials used in all these clothes are leather, jute, silk and cotton. Right? So basically what we can say that there are different types of clothes and different types of clothes are made up of different materials and in most cultures as I said that clothing was introduced as a method of protecting their body towards extreme conditions, weather conditions like strong winds, intense heat and cold. In particular what is mentioned over here? Yes, the weaves of clothes prevent the circulation of air around the skin and thus avoid the exit of air reheated by the sun which makes people feel uncomfortable and cold. So what does this mean? The weaves of clothes means they are made by something. Weaves means the clothes are made by weaving, knitting, all such methods are required. So the weaves of cloths basically prevent the circulation of air around the skin. And that is why it avoids the exit of air which is re reheated by the sun. Which makes the people feel uncomfortable and cold. So what can we say that the clear weaves of clothing avoid the ultraviolet radiation of the sun and the burns in the skin protecting our body and therefore also protecting our body from the heat. So more impermeable weaves protect the human body or our body from coming into contact with the water of rain or snow. That is why we wear raincoat in the rainy season. Since water is an excellent thermal storage cell when the cold rain drops or of snowflakes fall and touch the human skin they immediately send through the nerve cells a message to the human brain that the exposed area is becoming colder than the rest of the body and causing people to feel discomfort. Here clothes play an important role. So basically I just want to discuss that where do we get these materials from? These materials which basically form the clothes and protect us from various fatal weather conditions or extreme weather conditions. Right? So we will discuss about these materials later on. Before that, we should know the evolution of this clothing. That means, now we are going to discuss about the history of clothing. So students, in ancient times, people used the bark of trees and big leaves of trees or animal skins and furs to cover themselves because at that time, there were no clothes available for them. Have you ever wondered what materials people used in ancient times for cloths? It appears that in those times they used this bark and big leaves of trees. And after people began to settle in agricultural communities, they learned to weave twigs and grass into mats and baskets and even the clothes for themselves. Wines, animal fleas or hair were twisted together into long strands and these were then woven into fabrics. So the early Indians wore fabrics made out, made out of cotton that grew in the regions near the river Ganga. Even flax was also a plant that gives natural fibers. So it wasn't a plant, it is actually now also a plant that gives natural fibers. So these materials or the fabrics made out of cotton or flax were used by the people after they began to settle in agricultural communities. Even you will be amazed to know that, that according to archaeologists, 
The earliest clothing likely consisted of fur, leather, leaves or grass that were draped, wrapped or tied around the body. As you can see in the pictures. This is a picture of the people in the ancient times. Can you see here? They were wearing the animal skin. Because they were not having any type of cloth with them. So, the earliest clothing probably comprised of grass or leaves which were wrapped or tied around the body. So what we can say that in ancient Egypt, cotton as well as flax were cultivated near the river Nile and were used for making fabrics after some time. And in those days, stitching was not known. People simply trapped the fabrics around different parts of their body. And many different ways of trapping fabrics were used. But afterwards, with some of the inventions, like with the invention of the sewing needle, people started stitching fabrics to make cloths. And stitched cloths have gone through many variations since then in this invention. But it is not amazing that even today, sari, toti, lungi or turban is used as an unstitched piece of fabric. Just as there is a large variety in the food eaten all over the country, a large variety exists also in fabrics and clothing items. Right? So basically, even today also, a large variety should exist, but it is not. So we can say that in today's time also, clothing is, clothing has to be explored more and more. So basically we were talking about the ancient times, right? Like archaeologists have identified sewing needles of bone and ivory from about 30,000 BC. You will be amazed to know that about 30,000 years ago, people started using animal skins for clothing. And it is believed that something was there which was the fiber to be made into cloth. So what was it? Yes, wool. Wool was the first animal fiber to be weaved into cloth. And people started raising sheep for wool about 6,000 years ago. Even the domestication of silk worms to produce silk occurred around 3,000 BC in China. BC means before Christ. People started using animal skins, animal's hair or fur. Then they started using animal fiber, which was weaved into cloth. So basically we can say that after wool in India, cotton came into widespread use around 3000 BC. Then Fiber plants such as cotton and hemp came into use after the development of agriculture and these fibers were spun into thread and made into cloths. In India, cotton came into widespread. Then these cloths were not stitched but just wrapped around the body. So we can say that clothing was very expensive in the ancient and medieval world. Because without engine part machines, it was very hard to make. And so most people had very few changes of clothing. Like many people probably owned only the clothes they were wearing. Many children had no clothes at all and they just went naked. In the stone age, most clothing was made of leather or fur or woven grasses. By the time people had learned to spin yarn on a spindle and to weave cloth out of the yarn on looms, 
although many clothes, especially coats, were still made out of leather or fur. Most clothes were made out of wool from sheep or linen from the flax plant or cotton. Some rich people wore silk. Even in the Middle Ages, in the medieval period, people invented the spinning wheel, which made spinning yarn. So the spinning yarn go about four times as fast. Even the clothes were a little less expensive than they had been before, but still most people had only one or two outfits. So we can say that Western clothing, as the time passed, Western clothing gained popularity in India during the 20th century. And finally, this clothing, a variety of clothing came into existence, but still it has to be explored. Right? So, we discussed already that fiber plants such as cotton and hemp came into existence after the development of agriculture and they were spun into thread and made into cloths. Right? So, this was all about the introduction, the importance of cloths and the history of clothing. In the next session, we will continue this lesson and we will learn more about fiber and fabric. Till then, keep learning, keep enjoying. Bye children.